sudden here, I thought you could have looked at me. Bro, when you were talking about it. Bro, like when you were talking, all I heard was this part was shaky. I was like, how is this voice that deep? All I felt was shaky. No, it's like, probably because like he's straight bone. Like it's just my <laughs> Out of all the options I gave the students, one stuck out to them, and I was unsure about how well it would go over if we could get approval. And that was this play called The Blind Spot by Stephen Stack. It is about a character named Luke who commits suicide, and all of his friends, classmates, teachers' reactions to his suicide. And I thought it was gonna handle these issues, suicide, sexual orientation, self-harm, abuse, in a really cheesy, horrible, bad after-school special way. But fortunately, Stephen Stack has done an excellent job carefully and honestly dealing with these issues. And it was all them who picked it. And they pushed, and I got admin support, and they've done a great job with it. Uh, so we chose the blind spot mainly because we understand the issues that are going on within the play, and uh, we feel like we're a good crew who can um, portray that the correct way and not like a you know, where we take it as a joke and nothing like that. The first couple of days, it was, uh, you know, getting used to it and getting around, like, out of our, our own emotions and understanding, like, this is beyond us and we're just here trying to show that for everybody else. I did not choose this play. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't originally choose this play. Right. I chose the Grimm's Brothers. I think it was more so because I wasn't ready to talk about these problems that go along with depression and stuff and what other people go through because I might be going through some stuff like this, so I really didn't pick this play because I, I wanted to be I wanted it to be something fun and happy like the Grimm's right. Brothers it was all over the place it was supposed to be Adventure. funny I wanted to like have the crowd laugh yeah. and like laugh on stage like I thought it was gonna be funny yeah. everybody was like nah let's do something depressing I was like okay cool yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not necessarily depressing I think that it's very it's serious in that extent and understanding like what goes down though yeah yeah plus <clears throat> i think it is a big deal especially here at a smaller school since everybody is so close like i think opening up to like the last part of what it means like to be a person here and like having a relationship with the students and the teachers this play would also help too i wanted the class to perform this play because i think these issues are something that we don't talk about a lot depression anxiety self-abuse sexual orientation uh abuse are things that a lot of people deal with not even just our students but our community in general and it's very taboo to talk about these issues especially for me uh, i have severe depression and anxiety been medicated for six years therapy for three and i can't tell you how much of a difference it's made being open and honest about it and i honestly feel that the more we talk about these issues and come out about them that it'll be more acceptable we can help each other out and that it won't be so scary or taboo or horribly seen and we can get more people to get more help. Honestly, I feel like we kind of like came together more of like a class. Because like we're all like helping each other with our like our scripts and all that. Like we give each other like um, a lot of likes. Yeah, like advice, and advice on like what to improve on when we're doing our like scripts and all that. Yeah, and this play was actually like real sentimental for like some of us like at the, at the end when he go to kill himself, some of us even cried at that yeah. end part like a couple times. <laughs> like even though we know it's going to happen, just seeing it is just like, dang, people like really go through this type of stuff in life. Yeah. I think the part where he <laughs> comes up like on the grave and we all on the stage and stuff, he starts talking about like the suicide outline thing. I think that's the craziest part ever. Cause it's like, I don't know, like even when we always talk to the grave, I think that's really make yeah. it real, really make it sad. Yeah, I think um, like a lot of that also comes down to like with my character and how my character plays into it is like he was the best friend at a point in time. And then, you know, they used to hang out and play video games and everything. And uh, my character leaves the controller at the grave scene. I think like that's the part that always gets me is like, I, I'm the one doing that role and I'm putting it there. But at the same time, it also like hits me really hard. Like, dang, you know, like this is what I I'm part of this problem, and you know, there's people who also are actually in this situation, and like it's something that we should do differently. And another thing to me, it made me think about um, seeing everybody put something at the grave. Is that when one person dies, um, it doesn't. It's not just them that leaves. You kill a part of every single person that they right. were involved with for every single day. And so, like, it kind of makes you think, like, if you ever think like that or ever want to do something like that, you, you know that it's going to have an effect on somebody and that 
those people are going to be left with a hole in their heart that just can never be refilled. Right. This play is what 13 Reasons Why wants to be. Like, no lie. This is what, this is like the best representation for how suicide and like mental illness can not only affect that person, but everybody around you. And I feel like it's a decent message for everybody in the school. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a negative thing. Like, right. mental illness is always seen as like, there's something wrong with you, but nobody, like in this play, it kind of lets you say like, it's just if you need the extra help it's okay to like mm. put a hand out and to like have someone pick you up it's not like a disease it's, it shouldn't be called an illness it's just you're just struggling and you just want someone to be there with you right. one of my big things in my teaching career that i've always emphasized is being real with the students and opening up about things that we face as teachers we were always taught in school there is a fine line about who you are as a person who you are as a teacher and i just never bought into it so I've always been very genuine about my student with my students about their experiences um, and I've learned the more that I talk about it the more they're willing to talk about it the more they open about their families or themselves or friends they know and this conversation has led to a lot of really good growth my name is Fernando and my role is just smoking props on and off the stage I'm Adam Galindo, and I'm just a background character. I'm Keel, and I'm, I play Mark. I'm like one of the school bullies. I'm Mariah, and I play Katie, which is Luke's best friend. I'm, I'm Jeremiah, and I play as Luke, and he's the main character who's basically struggling with depression on his own throughout his life. I'm Cassandra Hill, and I play Lydia, and I'm basically like, a follower like I follow my best friend to figure out like what she want to do and become popular in the school and I'm also the funny one. I'm Kobe Thompson and my character is Chad. He is the, the main bully and he's the ex-best friend to Luke and uh, he has his own internal problems going on at home and he struggles with that and takes it out on Luke. My name is Franklin Hogan and I inside the play The Blind Spot I uh, play a teacher called Mr. Rayner. Um, in the play, he kind of neglects and doesn't help a student in need, and that's where his faults are. Luke's suicide. It's like the shortest scene in the play, but it's the most powerful. Like, when you just, I don't know, when you just watch it, it's real sad. The fact that you don't know, like, what he exactly did, right. like, kind of makes, like, you wonder, like, what did he actually do? Right. Because he just kind of just, and that's it. It kind of makes you think like, damn, Luke really was, like, he really went to that because it got so hard for him to live with his own thoughts and to live with himself that he just decided to take it all away. The lunchroom scene was definitely like uh, an important one because that's where like he's finally exposed to everybody. He was real about his own emotions towards uh, Grace and then, you know, she all out rejected him because of the, the tension that she had in the room. And uh, you know, and then seeing that, and then our our characters who's still over here bullying him and whatnot in, in that same sense. You know, I think for my character, definitely, because my character is like a bully and whatnot. Like, uh, I myself used to be like a bully at elementary school. <laughs> and then, I mean, it's, it's serious. Like, I actually, I actually was. I'm not going to lie. You should tell you. Not. <laughs> no, not like that. But, it, it, you know, I used to be like a bully. Not like no major one or anything like that. But I think, like, it definitely made me understand that, like, these people go through different things. And 
this play kind of made me see what it means to just have friendships and develop bonds with people because like you never know what's happening with the people around you and nothing is always about like love or anything like that like sometimes it's just about having a friend there someone to talk to and like to me like I had never like really thought about that because like I thought I didn't really like care about having friends or whatever after high school but like kind of doing this play and with this class like kind of made me feel more like notice like I'm more sentimental than I thought and like that I do care about friends and like I do like like value and like cherish those bonds that I have with the people. I know people are gonna think this is about old Chapman or that thing that happened to you, but it wasn't. If it was, it would have happened the same day, not three weeks later. I guess this has been building me for years now. I just couldn't tell anyone because I didn't think anybody would understand because we really need to be the loop that drive us. The loop that always was strong. I was here for it. I'm always good. But that was a real big I don't want to disappoint anyone. It probably would feel like they make a better idea than the first one. When that idea would be false, well, you have nothing wrong. I'm still sad. Parents are voicing the dead and trying to do that, but sad is different from trust. When you're sad, you can see the face in class. When you're depressed, you're out of I was really paying attention to my sessions, and Luke, as an amateur psychologist, I'm pretty sure you were hard to impress, probably didn't even know it. No one did. I guess it was a blind spot. But that's my favorite thing now. I was going to be uh, Definitely don't be ignorant. I think uh, to piggyback on what you were saying earlier about like everybody just walked past each other with their heads and their phones and whatnot. It's just like, you know, a look at somebody, like I said, with a smile as being powerful. Uh, just just that in general can change somebody's day around. And you know, I think it's that a lot of us are just ignorant to that extent. It's like, we shouldn't really, we should try to get away from that and uh, really connect with each other more. Um, one thing I would like to say is like, don't let your ego get in like the way of like asking for help. Don't let your ego like overtake like, yeah, look, don't make it feel like if you ask for help, it's gonna like bring down your ego. That's not it. If you need help, look out for that help. Don't let your ego like take it over. And I was gonna say like, it's okay like just to be sad or to be going through things. It's okay to talk to people, to cry. Like a lot of people hold in their emotions because of what everybody else think or how they feel about themselves feeling weak or not being strong enough because I'm crying and now I feel like I'm putting myself down for nothing. It's okay to cry and let your emotions out because when you hold it all in, then one day you're going to explode and that's going to be some shit you ain't never seen before. So. <laughs> I think that's just part of like being human at the end of the day. So like we have multiple emotions for a reason, you know, happiness and sadness and fear, guilt, and, and pride, and all that. It's just, all that makes you human. It's like trying to deny that. It's just trying to be something that, that we're not in that extent. I think we all need to acknowledge that. I'm uh, 14 people age 15 to 24 commit suicide. This is the third leading cause of death behind accidents and homicide. If you or someone you love is struggling with depression, anxiety, or any other mental illness, please seek help. You can call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline or you can look up suicidepreventionlifeline.org for additional resources and live chats. Together,